On today's episode, why do automotive connectors fail? Today's episode is brought to you by engineering.com, a globally trusted source for engineering content. Check out this and many other exclusive videos for the engineering professional found only on engineering.com TV today. Take a look at this. Now to those of you in the automotive, electrical, or electronics industry, you know what this is. It's a connector, but to me it's not just any connector. This particular connector represents a 75 mile auto club tow and a lost weekend. Why? Because this charred melted chunk of resin sat midway in the power feed circuit to the in-tank electric fuel pump on my vehicle. What brand, you may ask? Well, I'm actually not going to say because my point is not about any one OEM, although this one was from a large Michigan-based automaker, but instead it's about things like this little connector and how they're engineered. This is part of what the industry calls a wiring harness, one of several of modern vehicles that form the central nervous system of cars and light trucks. Now, cars have always had them, for over a century in fact, and for much of that time they were little more than taped bundles of wires with crimped ring terminals at the ends. Now, the development of modern injection molding and low-cost thermoplastic resins around World War II, however, well, that led engineers design connectors that pushed into place and locked, dramatically reducing the installation time on the assembly line. Now, these things brought other benefits as well. Connections were positive and repeatable. They wouldn't vibrate loose and they weren't subject to the skill of the individual installer. Now, in theory, they're just as durable, but like so many things in design engineering, the move to this technology from spade lugs and ring terminals, well, it moved responsibility for quality and durability out of the hands of the line worker and onto the desk of the engineer. So what does it take to design one of these things? Well, it all starts with questions, a lot of questions. How much current will the circuit carry? What are the physical constraints on the metal contacts inside the injection molding? How big or how small must the connector be? How much insertion force is required to seat and latch the connector? How much vibration must the completed connection withstand? How much heat? Is it exposed to corrosive liquids or vapors? Does the connector have to be keyed or indexed to prevent incorrect assembly? Should it be color-coded? And that's just the initial functional considerations. In choosing the plastic resin, depending on the application, it may be as simple as a straight commodity-grade polyethylene, a commodity resin with additives for things like flame retardancy and color, or it may be a filled resin or even an engineering grade. The other end of this harness has a connector that spends its life immersed in gasoline, so you can bet that it's designed and tested differently from this under dash component. And of course, if possible, it has to be designed at the lowest possible cost, and with the greatest possible commonality with existing parts. Now that's a tough order. So why did this one fail? Well, it was installed in an inertia switch, a safety device designed to shut off power to the fuel pump in case of a collision. Now that switch is installed on the passenger side tow board in a location where it's exposed to dust, dirt, and moisture. Now, it doesn't take much to corrode the contacts, and with corrosion comes resistance, with resistance comes heat. Now, can a major OEM simulate things like a kid with muddy boots kicking his feet up under the dash? Well, probably not, but today this kind of thing had better be an exceedingly rare event. This is a highly competitive industry, and I've never seen this happen on my Honda. Well, that's it for today's episode of End of the Line, brought to you by engineering.com. If you like this show, be sure to subscribe to our channel and click on the notification bell for our next episode. For our deeper engineering video series for the manufacturing professional, visit engineering.com TV to watch exclusive shows like Manufacturing the Future, not found here on our YouTube channel. The link is in the description below. Thanks for watching.